If it's your first time playing the game on the computer, then you might have some difficulty adjusting to the movements. Just remember, WASD is for moving your character in different directions, left click is for using the item currently equipped on the toolbar, and right click is for interacting with objects on the screen. So you can actually pick up items inside your room, you also use your right click in order to harvest crops when they're fully grown. When you press escape, you can actually go to the last tab, this is your options tab, and you can change some of the settings to make the game a little bit better. You can actually customize the size of your user interface and even include an in-game toggle that allows you to adjust the zoom level. This is going to be important in the next sections of this video. Oh, and turn on that show hitbox thing. It's going to be useful. Okay, so one feature of Stardew Valley is that you actually have energy. Now in year one, when you start out, you only have 270 points of energy. You can check this by hovering your cursor to the green bar at the bottom right of your game screen. And you have to know that almost everything that you do in this game involves energy. So for example, using your hoe, watering can, pickaxe, and axe actually costs two energy each whenever you swing your arm. And swinging your fishing pole, or when you fish, costs eight energy. Aside from energy, one of the things you have to look out for is time. Now, in Stardew Valley, there are certain shops that are only open starting from 9 a.m. onwards. And depending on the shop, this could be different. So, if you look at the top right of your game screen, this actually shows the clock. Now, when I timed it with my phone, or it actually takes 7 real-world seconds for 10 minutes in the game to advance. So, for every hour in the game that's only around less than a minute so ha you have to keep that in mind whenever you play stardew valley <laughs> do not do this always remember trees fall to whichever direction you're facing whether it be left or right it's debatable whether or not they fall in what way if you cut them north or south but preferably if there is a body of water you cut the tree or you chop the you chop the tree away from the body of water. And last pro tip, chop down trees instead of logs. Whenever you chop down a tree, you actually get 13 pieces of wood. And it actually saves more energy if you cut trees instead of cutting logs individually. Long story short, you save more energy if you chop trees instead of logs. All right, so as you can see in your farm, there are these green bush-like objects, and these are actually weeds. Now you can actually use your scythe to cut down those weeds. And one of the good things is that there is a chance, I don't know what percent, but there is a chance of these weeds dropping mixed seeds. Now mixed seeds actually grow into whatever crop plantable in a particular season. That is sold in Pierre's shop. So, for spring, it can be your parsnip, your cauliflower, your potato, these kinds of things. So, whenever you get mixed seeds, make sure to plant them because they're free money, bro. In this game, you can actually pick up some fruits or vegetables around the map. Now, this is called foraging. In spring, you really only have to look for four things. Wild horse radishes, daffodils, leeks, and dandelions. Now these four are needed in a community center bundle or like a mission later on in the game. So the topic of community center is actually a whole nother video in itself, but for now, just keep one of each in a chest. You can sell the wild horseradish and daffodil for extra cash, but I suggest keeping the leek and dandelions you find. Why? They actually provide a significant amount of energy that your character can use for other tasks such as chopping down more trees, breaking rocks, watering your crops, or fishing. Also, there's an area bottom right of the forest where spring onions spawn. Keep these for energy. They don't sell for quite as much. Alright, a minor tip from me. So if you're going around Pelican Town, what you can actually do is always keep your scythe equipped on your toolbar. So why am I saying this? Because one of the things that you can do by mistake is when you're going around, you might actually m misclick your left click. 
Now, whenever you misclick, you left click, and you have your watering can, your hoe, or your axe, your pickaxe, um, equipped, you lose two points of energy. Now, that might seem small, but that actually that can actually build up over time. So, just keep the scythe equipped. All right. So you unlock fishing in day two. Go to the port and try bringing a chest with you. When Willie gives you a fishing rod, you can already try fishing in the Pierre. Place down the chest and start fishing. Now the mini game is pretty straightforward. Use left click to make the green bar higher and don't click anything so that it goes down. Don't worry if you fail the first few tries. The green bar increases as your fishing level increases as well. Once you reach level five, you can actually choose the Fisher perk so that the fish that you catch sell for 25% more. Fishing, when you've finished watering your crops, is actually the best way to earn free money while waiting for your crops to grow. On a good run, I actually made seven to 8,000 in the, by day six, just by fishing and getting level five, fishing level. Seriously, it's a good way to earn money. All right, so whenever you water crops, Try preparing a 3x3 grid. This is usually a good start for beginners since you can actually go to the middle tile, water the 8 surrounding tiles by hovering your cursor over the tiles you want to water, then you can move to the next tile and water the crop you were standing on. This actually saves a lot of time instead of just walking and watering each plant individually. Now, later on in the game, we'll be having these items called sprinklers. Now, these are actually um, farming items that actually water uh, t some tiles depending on the quality of the sprinkler this is actually a different topic altogether but just keep in mind you will have access to sprinklers later in the game hi guys this is Mickey from Blank Gaming and thank you so much for watching this video this actually took quite some time to make so I hope you appreciate it and this is just my personal take on some things that you might need to know when you just started out in Stardew Valley. I'll be making future videos focusing on how to make the most profit that you can in your first week and preparing yourself for summer, talking about the community center, what are the importance of kegs, and why do you need to be close with the villagers. Anyway, that's it for now. Don't forget to like and follow the page and see you next time.